a fetus nestled into the lining of a virgin's womb. That's how the story of our salvation begins, and it happened here in Nazareth, which is why it's here in Nazareth that our pilgrimage begins. It was here that the angel Gabriel appeared to Mary, and that she agreed to be the mother of God, and that the incarnation began as that child began to grow in her womb. And as God took on our human humanity, so we could take on God's divinity. We started our pilgrimage in this wonderful town. We've had a fantastic day. We've been to the uh, sites of the Annunciation, both the well, where Christians of the Eastern tradition believe the Annunciation happened, and also the wonderful Basilica of the Annunciation. We celebrated the Eucharist in Christchurch Anglican Church, and also been to a fantastic uh, secondary school, Christ Anglican School here in the town, seeing some of the living stones and meeting some of the people who bear witness to Christ here in the Holy Land today. It's been a great start uh, for this group from the Blackburn Diocese. I wish you could be with us, but if you follow this vlog every day, you can be a virtual pilgrim following us as we make our way through the holy sites of the Holy Land, starting here in Galilee, then making our way to Jerusalem. So come back each day and join us as we walk in the footsteps of Christ. Good morning, virtual pilgrims, and welcome to day two of our pilgrimage to the Holy Land. And today we've come to this fantastic spot. You can see this water around me. This is the very source of the River Jordan. And of course, it's in the Jordan River where Jesus was baptised. What an amazing story that is in the Bible. The sun goes into the water. The spirit is seen. The Father's voice is heard from heaven saying, this is my son, my beloved. It's an amazing showing forth of the beauty of God. But of course, Jesus got baptised not for his own benefit, it didn't do to him anything he didn't already have. He got baptised for our benefit, so that we could see who he is and so choose to follow him. That's why it's fantastic that we've come also to this site, which is where Peter answered the Lord's question, who do you say I am, and proclaimed Jesus to be the Christ and so agreed to follow him. As we've come here on pilgrimage, we've done just what Peter did. We've declared our faith in Jesus Christ as we've, as we've made anew the promises of our own baptism, promising to follow him. But don't take my word for what that means. Let's talk to a pilgrim. Joe, come over here and tell us what it meant as a typical pilgrim to make your promises of baptism in, in the, ba in the uh, River Jordan. Well, clearly, I can't remember the first time that the promises were made for me, um, but it, it was very special because obviously I've not renewed them since my confirmation in 1967. And it reminded me of my godmother, who's still alive, thankfully, my auntie, and uh, also reminded me how special I must um, tell the uh, 16 godchildren I have about this instant. And it reminds me that every day we are lucky through God's unconditional love to have the ability to be renewed and refreshed on a daily basis. Joe, thank you very much. That's all from me. I'll see you tomorrow. Hey, virtual pilgrims, look at this. That's the Sea of Galilee, that is. Now, it's really hot weather for us here in the Holy Land. And so yesterday, towards the end of the day, I jumped in the Sea of Galilee and it was gorgeous. It was so fresh and clean and beautiful. It was around here that Jesus taught people a fresh way of living, a new way of being human. Because it's around the shores of the Sea of Galilee that Jesus went about so much of his public ministry. It's here that he taught people a different way of being human, as he called them to follow him, as he set people free, as he forgave, and as he healed, and as he made whole. And that teaching came to a head right on this spot where I'm now standing. We're on Mount Beatitude. Here Jesus preached the Sermon on the Mount, and he said to people those beautiful, blessed are you sentences. How blessed are the pure in heart, he says. Or as one translation puts it, how blessed are those who know their need of God. We find freedom when we acknowledge our dependence on God. When we turn to him with all our hearts, when we accept that without him we are nothing, that's when we're set free, liberated to be the people he calls us to be. It's only in our relationship with Christ that we find that freedom. We've had a beautiful day travelling around the Sea of Galilee today, being to those places where Jesus went, uh, walking on the ground where he himself walked, and experiencing afresh something of the freedom that only he can bring. It's been a beautiful day, but from here the mood's going to change, because like Jesus in the Sea of Galilee, we're going to set our faces on a very different place as we make our way now towards Jerusalem. 
Hello Virtual Pilgrims, today we've come up a mountain as you can see from the views behind me. I'd like to say that we've walked up and uh, got some good exercise but we came up in taxis instead, taxis who have a particular skill for going around hairpin bends at 120 miles an hour. So we're feeling a little bit frazzled but nonetheless stunned by the beauty of this place. This is Mount Tabor, behind me is the Church of the Transfiguration. Jesus came up this mountain with three of the disciples and here incredible things happened as he showed his beauty as God. He shone out with light. Moses and Elijah appeared, a cloud, the glory of God, enwrapped him, and the Father's voice was heard from heaven, this is my beloved Son. The incredible vision of heaven. But why did it happen? Because from this mountain Jesus went back down. He walked into a scene of terrible sin and suffering, and then he went to Jerusalem, the place of his death, where he would deal with human sin and suffering once and for all. And that's just what we're doing. We've left Galilee, we're now on our way to Jerusalem the place where we will walk with Jesus in the footsteps of the cross. And remember that through dying and rising, he's done away with death and done away with sin, so we can gaze upon the glory of heaven forever. And then, of course, eventually from here, we're going to go home again. The whole point of a pilgrimage is to go back home. Go back home as different people who can share the glory of heaven, the love of God in our daily lives. So it's a fantastic place we've come up to. We're going to do the most important bit now, which is to go back down again and then go on to Jerusalem. Join me there. Good evening, virtual pilgrims. This is an, ex an extra vlog because we've just seen the re most remarkable thing. We've walked through the Damascus Gate, one of the gates into uh, Jerusalem that you can see behind me here. We've walked down to the old city and we've seen one of the most remarkable sites in the world. Sister Sue, what have we just been to? We've actually been to the Shabbat celebration at the Western Wall, um, called the Wailing Wall to us, and it was absolutely wonderful. There was nothing wailing about it. It was joyful. It was exciting. It was a gathering together of the people who really enjoyed their God and I sat next to some women who were uh, studying Torah and they were singing about it and singing choruses and dancing it was just absolutely amazing the sheer joy that is at that place at this time. Extraordinary uh, cele ex celebration, extraordinary atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And then as we walked back through the old city, we mm -hmm. heard the Muezzins cry, didn't we, over the city. Absolutely. And that just reminds us that Jerusalem is an extraordinary coming together place mm -hmm. of three major world religions, where all the Abrahamic faiths find a reason to come on pilgrimage. We are obviously, as Christian pilgrims, over the next few days, we'll be going through the events around Jesus' uh, uh, death and, mm -hmm. and resurrection. Mm -hmm. But for Muslims and for Jews as well, this is a holy city for all of us. What extraordinary we start to our time in Jerusalem, sister. It's wonderful. Whatever wonderful. next. And virtual Absolutely. pilgrims, you, if you follow us, you can find out what happens next to us. Good evening, virtual pilgrims. And you join me live from the Pilgrim Coach. And just to prove it, here's a cheer from the pilgrims. Yay! Now you've met them all. We've spent the day in Bethlehem. And what an extraordinary day it's been. We've been encountering the incarnation, the heart of our Christian faith, that God came to take human form in this very place, in this very city. And we've done that as we celebrated the Eucharist on the Shepherd's Field, and as we've been to the Church of the Nativity. We've also been to a couple of uh, it, it, things that have helped us to experience the Living Stones. We've been to our Guides Parish Church, and we've been to a hospital. It's actually, in many ways, not been that easy a day, though. In order to get into Bethlehem, we had to cross through the great big ugly security wall. We've heard many stories about how local Palestinian Christians are leaving Bethlehem and leaving this area, moving to all sorts of other parts of the world, and how fragile the church is now in this part of the world. We've seen many uh, incidents in which we've seen people's poverty and the hardness of life here in Bethlehem. But of course, that is precisely the point. The incarnation is not about Christmas cards, I know we're all used to those lovely images of Jesus sitting and surrounded by the beautiful light with nice cleaned animals and lovely people standing all around him. The reality is that Jesus was born in the midst of the muck and the dust and the dirt of human life, in tough times and in a tough town. And because we've experienced that ourselves for today, so we've experienced the reality of the incarnation. Today, God in Jesus locates himself amongst the poor and the forgotten and the marginalised. And into those situations, he brings hope. We know that he's the hope of the world because he brings that hope where, he's, where that is most needed. That's what we've experienced today and that's why we've really encountered the incarnation. So our pilgrimage continues. We're travelling now back to Jerusalem and we'll see something of the city of Jerusalem tomorrow. So join me again then. Good morning, virtual pilgrims. I'm only able to whisper that you're joining me for one of the most extraordinary sights in the Holy Land. We're here now in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre 
This church covers two vital sites for Christians. First of all, the hill of Calvary where Jesus died, and then behind me here, behind that remarkable stone edifice, is the tomb where they laid the body of Jesus. The tomb that was once a cave, but is now part of this really remarkable church. We've got up very, very early indeed this morning, and we've experienced the most extraordinary thing, which is Christians of different traditions celebrating the resurrection according to different rites and different customs, but worshipping the same Lord. Over to my right, you can see the Copts in their chapel there. The Patriarch, I think, has just arrived and is leading the worship there. Just behind me, there's the Western Catholics, the Franciscans, have been celebrating the Mass. We've been on the roof where the Ethiopians are celebrating, are waiting for the Greeks to arrive. It is just an astonishing sight and sound and smells of Christians from all over the world as giving thanks to the resurrection in this space. Later today, we'll be doing just the same in St George's, the Anglican Cathedral, and I'm hoping to speak to the Dean there, so come back later. But first of all, I hope that by joining me virtually, you've been able to take in something of the incredible atmosphere of Sunday morning, the morning of the resurrection in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Virtual pilgrims, you join me at St George's, the Anglican Cathedral in Jerusalem, where we have a very special guest who's joining our vlog, Dean Hossam Naum, who's the Dean of St George's Cathedral here, and has a very important role both at the cathedral and across the Diocese of Jerusalem. It's, um, Hossam, it's really good that you can talk to us. Thank Tell you, us a little bit about your ministry here in the cathedral and across the diocese. Yeah, the Diocese of Jerusalem, as you know, extends into five countries in the Middle East, Israel, Palestine, Jordan, Lebanon and Syria. And the, the work and ministry of the Diocese of Jerusalem is something that is seen as an invaluable thing, especially within this region and throughout the Anglican Communion. You know, we have uh, uh, over 30 institutions, we have 27 parishes, and we reach to those who are the poorest of the poor within the community and serving all people, irrespective of their ethnicity, of their color, of their religious backgrounds. And I think the hope that the Diocese of Jerusalem brings into the community is something that, you know, we would like the support and the prayers of all the people throughout our communion, because what we do here is we do it on, not only on behalf of the Diocese of Jerusalem, but on behalf of the whole church throughout the world. The Christian community here in the Middle East and in Israel-Palestine is a, is, a, is a vital one, but a shrinking one, but it's so important to us, and especially for us who come as pilgrims. If you had a message for those watching this vlog, uh, Christians back home in the UK, what would you say to them? Yeah, I, I just want to say to them that, you know, um, you know we have that message uh, that we received uh, kind of 2,000 years ago, do not be afraid, be courageous you know, have strength. And I think, you know, that message of the, of the gospel today echoes within our churches, within our communities, and in a place where there is so many challenges that we face, you know, we believe that number doesn't really matter. You know, that is something we know that, you know, even though we are small in number, and that number is ever dwindling because of the political and economical situation, but we are at the same time tenacious, we are uh, courageous and we persevere because we know that we have a message to give and uh, something valuable to offer to the people of the world and especially in this land is that to give them hope, love and faith. Father, thank you so much. Tenacity, courage in the gospel. It's been a real privilege for us to be able to worship with you this morning. Thank you thank so much for your thank ministry you. Good here. To have you with us. And please be assured of our prayers. Thank, thank you. Very you. Much, thank you. It's good to see you again, virtual pilgrims, as we continue this remarkable pilgrimage to the Holy Land. And we've had the most amazing morning as we've walked the way of the cross through the crowded streets of Jerusalem. For Christians, the word remember is a very important one. When we remember something, we don't just vaguely reminisce. We cause the power of the past to come breaking into the present. When we remember Jesus' sacrifice in the Eucharist, for example, we receive the power of the cross brought to us through bread and wine. We've been remembering the cross this morning as we've actually made our way through the streets of Jerusalem, stopping at 14 different places, ending up just behind me here at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Here's Ruth, one of our pilgrims. Ruth, just tell us, what was it like making the Stations of the Cross here in Jerusalem? Uh, not easy. It's very distracting. So we've be all been given a rosary. So I, as I was walking, instead of looking at the what beautiful scarves and things like that, I just kept saying the same three three few words and just trying to keep my my focus on on Jesus and in following his 
his path. Many people would say it's quite realistic. We're used to doing the stations in nice open spaces, but here in the crowded streets of Jerusalem, that's what Jesus did through these busy shops with people spitting at him and shouting at him. Did you get any sense of that? A little, yes. Um, What moved me, I was with two other pilgrims, Jeremy and Jean, and as we were going down and I was being distracted, we actually heard a cock crow. And I involuntarily laughed and I thought, yes, we're all so human, we make mistakes. Unfortunately, the cock cock crowed not three, but four times, but it reminded me that, yes, we need to keep reminding ourselves that we are forgiven. And that's what the cross is all about. Thank you so much for that. So a busy morning, a frantic morning, but a very powerful one as we've met with Jesus and walked the way of the cross on the crowded streets of this amazing city. Good evening, virtual pilgrims. And you join us tonight in the dining room of the Golden Walls Hotel, which is where we've been staying in Jerusalem. And it's the end of a really remarkable day. It's been an amazing day of pilgrimage to begin with. We've been to the Paternoster Church where Jesus taught the disciples to pray the Our Father. We went into the wilderness. And as good Lancashire pilgrims, we managed to bring wind and rain to the desert, but still had an amazing mass against the backdrop of the Judean wilderness. We saw St George's, we've been to Jericho. But also we've engaged with contemporary issues today. One thing we like to do in this pilgrimage is not just freeze time as if it were 2,000 years ago, but actually think about what life is like for people in Israel Israel and Palestine today and one of the amazing things we've done is to go to a boys home Jil El Jamal in Bethany. Lisa's joining me it was an amazing visit wasn't it Lisa? It was it was really interesting and I felt really privileged privileged to be able to go and see the work uh, at this home and the boys are just great they're aged from about four to twenty and uh, they're all boys who've had really difficult backgrounds many many are orphans and they are looked after so well and we met the house father who was such a wonderful man and he too had been an orphan boy when he was a little boy and he was still working with the the children and they didn't have a lot it was a wonderful clean sunny bright place but they didn't have a lot but they were so happy and so loved and it was a real privilege to to be there and pray with them and and see the wonderful work uh, that's going on. And some pretty tough stories, weren't there? We met, were. met one boy called Jamal who uh, was, went into the orphanage at the age of two and they found 40 burns on his body oh, from is. cigarettes. Yeah. So some terrible stories, but actually stories of redemption. Yeah. And I think one of the great things is that we've seen God's kingdom, we've seen God at work, not just in the dead stones, but in the living stones yeah. and in what's going on today. It's been one of the real features of our time together, hasn't it? It has, it really has. And, and at, the, at the boys' home, they're really planning for the future of these boys, planning for them to go to university, to go to technical college, so that they will have the future and they will have homes and families that they'll be able to give more to than their families were able to give to them. So another amazing day here in the Holy Land. We've got just one full day to go, can you believe it, yeah. which we're spending in Jerusalem. So come back tomorrow and find out what, we, what what's going to happen then. Virtual pilgrims, you join me in a really, really seriously weird place. We are way under the streets of Jerusalem in the most extraordinary network of tunnels which are made to channel water around Jerusalem in ancient times. We've been in a Canaanite tunnel, 4,000 years old. We've paddled up to our knees in Hezekiah's tunnel. This is a Herodian tunnel. Incredible engineering under the streets to get water into the right places. Water has incredible power in this part of the world. We arrived in the midst of a drought. We prayed for rain. It rained. That was boring for the pilgrims, but fantastic for people living in this part of the world after such a long drought. And of course, for us as pilgrims, everything points us to Jesus. And it's been bringing to life for us all those many images where Jesus uses water as a sign of his presence and his love. Down that way is the Pool of Siloam, where where Jesus healed the blind man in John chapter 9. Above me is the Pool of Bethatha, where he healed the lame blind man in John chapter 5. And of course, also behind me is the temple, where Jesus spoke of the Holy Spirit as a fountain of living water coming out of the believer's heart. In arid, dry countryside, these images of Jesus as the living water, bringing us life and refreshment and joy and hope, are incredibly powerful ones. And in the Holy Land, we've drunk deep from the living water, which is Jesus Christ. I hope you've been able to enjoy something, too, of our pilgrimage over the last few days. Perhaps later on, I'll be able to bring you some impressions of other pilgrims, but thank you so much for joining us. 
Hello virtual pilgrims. We are here in Emmaus where we've just celebrated our final Eucharist, just like Cleopas and his companion. We recognise Jesus in the breaking of bread and just as they rushed from Emmaus back home to share the good news, that's what we're going to do now. We've reached the most important part of the pilgrimage which is when we go home again. So it's a good time to think through the experience. So we've got a few typical pilgrims here. They're very quickly going to tell you the high spot of their pilgrimage. Let's go around the line. My um, high spot of the um pilgrimage was in Bethlehem at the Church of the Nativity seeing the star where Jesus was born. Thank you Val. Hi man. Uh, the thing that made an impact on me was when we were in the Palestinian territories and visited a hospital and we saw a, um, a wall being built at the edge of a, um, an Israeli settlement and it made me realise the struggle that the Palestinians have at the moment. Thank you very much, Anne. I'm Anitra, and for me, yesterday's visit to the Church of St. Peter in Gallicantu was very emotional. And it, the actual spot of Caiaphas's house, we went to the dungeon. After that, we went to the Chapel of the Door Mission and saw the shrine to Our Lady. I'm Pam, and the highlight for me has been to celebrate Mass in the wilderness in a vast wilderness of desert. I'm David. I had the most uh, emotional and spiritual experience of my life at dawn in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. My name is Susan. My special moment was in Ein Karem when I visited the church of the Catholic Church of St John Baptist and Father Damien very touchingly lit a candle and said a prayer with me together for my clergy in my namesake church of St John Baptist and for the future of our parish. It was very touching. My name is Edward. The moment for me was listening to the Dean of uh, St George's Cathedral and seeing a man so full of hope and optimism and a great future with a, a person like that with, uh, in charge. I have some hope for the Middle East. Thank you. I'm Mandy. When we were at Bethesda, we had a service of prayer with laying on of hands for healing and wholeness, and I found that incredibly powerful. My name's Liz and the most powerful moment was being on the Sea of Galilee on a boat when the engine was cut and that made me decide to get confirmed today at Iran Masters. My name is Arthur. The highlight of the pil pilgrimage for me was the Eucharist in the desert where it really brought to me the hardship Jesus went through, um, weighing up humanity and how hard that was um, for him to do what he did and to tell everybody about what we should do in our future. And last of all, we have Father Damien Porter, who's played a major role in organising and leading this pilgrimage. What are your particular memories, Father? I think it's, it's been a wonderful joy to, set up, to, to make this pilgrimage with so many people. Um, pilgrimage is a wonderful thing in itself, but celebrating with people from different places and going back to different places, refreshed and renewed. We've worshipped together, we've walked together, we've talked together, we've encouraged each other, we've laughed and we've cried a bit, we've laughed a lot. It's been a wonderful experience to share and to be re reminded of the fact that we are one family in Christ and, uh, and, and it is Christ that we take back with us, refreshed and renewed. Thank you for so much for those reflections. Thank you also, Virtual Pilgrims, for joining us every single day. I pray that those of you who wished you might one day be able to walk the steps that we've walked and come to this wonderful place and meet Jesus and get to know him more deeply through being here in the Holy Land on a pilgrimage. Thank you so much for following us. May God be with you. Music